Hello again, fish a lots. Let me be honest with you and say that black drum fish uh, kind of tastes like garbage. To me, it does. It's an old fish. It's got worms in it. It's just not very good. But I got good news out there for you. I got one recipe that really does make this fish taste mm, pretty good. Pretty good. And at the end of the video, I'll show you my 97-year-old Nono and taste test this with him and see if he likes what I have to show you today. So first, I'm going to show you how to catch him, then I'm going to show you how to cook him, and then we're going to have some fun. So stick around, and of course, let's get into it. And all right, let's get right into the tips there. You just saw that tick on the rod, and that's all you're going to get initially from these big drum. They're going to kind of lay on it a little bit, and you just need to wait. You need to have some patience. The biggest mistake I see is people pick up the rod too early. You got to make the rod bend over just like it will here shortly. Go. Take a couple of reels on it, pick there it up, go, and you're in business. Oh, screaming across the current there. Yeah, that's a drum. And so this fight took about 15 minutes. So I'm going to edit it a little bit, not show you all 15 minutes of the fight. We'll fast forward to some fun uh, fighting action and comments from the Fish Lock crew. And then I'll go back and I'll show you a couple of wrong ways to set the hook, as well as the right way to set the hook, just to nail down the point. And we actually missed the fish as well as I was fighting this fish. There was uh, some colorful language exchanged, so I had to make sure I edit that out. <laughs> it's a family show here, Fish Lots. It's a family show. <laughs> And another mistake that I see a lot of people make with these drum fish is they get a little overzealous with the pumping of the rod, like they're fighting a big blue marlin or something. And then when they go down to reel in, they're actually giving the fish a lot of slack. And if you give any of these fish slack in this current, they will shake these hooks, even circle hooks. So see what I'm doing? I'm just keeping the rod at about a 45 degree angle. When I feel a little bit of give, I'll crank down on them, make sure that line is tight, make sure that fish is coming in, and I'll land this fish just fine just let the rod do the work let the fish fight against the rod and you won't have a problem catching these big prehistoric awesome fish and first tip about eating these fish is this is actually about the perfect size to eat them you don't want to eat the big 80 90 pounders they're just super old fish upwards of 50 to 60 years this one's about 50 pounds and that'll do just fine for the recipe i'm about to show you now let's get back to how to set and not set the hook. So you see right there, you're reeling in on the fish and you just give a quick hook set. That's no good. You already ripped the hook right out of the fish's mouth. And of course we get nothing there. Here's another one where you get that FOMO. You see the rods ticking a little bit. You lift the rod up out of the rod holder. And now watch, you're going to point the rod to the fish. That's giving the fish all sorts of slack, allowing the fish to throw the hook or drop the hook. You're not allowing the circle hook to turn in the fish's mouth. And of course, we missed this fish as well. Now watch this middle rod right here. You see it ticking right there? Now that's when you need patience and you're not going to pick up the rod, okay? Just let it sit there. Wait till the fish turns in the current. Wait till that circle hook turns in the mouth. You'll see the rod bow over here, and I'm still not going to pick up the rod. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two turns on the handle to make sure that line's nice and tight and that circle hook's in that fish right there. Now when I pick up the rod... I know I'm hooked up. No need to set the hook. No need to do anything. I'm hooked up. I'm on. And that fish will be right there in the boat. And all right, it doesn't matter how you set the hook on these fish. You got to find them first. And that's exactly what you're looking for right there. Those deep, dark marks close to the bottom. Now, those marks are good, but these marks are even better. Right there, as I'm pointing at, you want those marks right there on the bottom. You see that dark red, that's hard bottom. Those are razor clam beds, and those fish are in there and feeding. And that's exactly where you want to start throwing out some baits. And speaking of baits, of course, there is some clam. You want to make sure to take proper care of the clam. You can see they're in a cooler they're covered in ice those are surf clams excellent bait for black drum fish and then of course some white legger crabs these crabs are great some blue crabs and you could even use artificial lures now i will tell you the advantage of using crabs over clam is is that when you use crab you're going to avoid getting a lot of the undesired fish like skates and sharks and that type of stuff generally speaking when you get a bite off the crab it's going to be a black drum you will get more bites off of the clam however so that's just part of fishing you got to figure it out in each and every trip but clam and the two types of crab are exactly what we're using here today 
All right, next up, if you're planning on eating these drumfish, you have to bleed them. Again, they're old fish, and you just need to get the blood out of them. It's better for the fish, it's more humane for the fish, and it's better for you to eat the fish. Now, it's a little bit graphic, so I won't show it so much to you here, but right there with these drum hanging over the side of the boat, you could tell where the incision is made right underneath the gills there, and that kills the fish very quickly, gets the blood out, and makes it more tasty for you when you get them home. Now let's head over to the kitchen. All right, and here it is, fish lots. That is one piece of drum fish right there. And this is one of the smaller fish, so everybody always wants to catch and keep as much fish as they can, but look at that. That is just one half of one of the smaller fish, and that could feed an army right there. So this is what we're gonna be cutting up, and I'm gonna be feeding myself and my 97-year-old Nono, who loves eating fish. So let me show you how to cut this into uh, sizable portions and we're going to make drum fish parm out of it. It's going to be delicious. And all right, so you see this is a giant slab of fish, as I said previously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chunk this up into uh, sizable portions, basically, for human beings. I just finished chunking all this up and it's actually 10 serving. And this is a little guy and this will feed 10 people. So now what I'll do is, is I'll take our fillets like so. I'll dip it in our egg, just like that. And then this is just regular panko that I use for carp fishing. I don't have any uh, Italian breadcrumb, which is what I prefer for this. But uh, you know, you do it with you have. And of course I have panko for carp bait. So I'm gonna eat it myself, just like the carp eat it. <laughs> so here you go. It's all breaded up, ready to go. All right, and so the next step is we're gonna add some extra virgin olive oil into a frying pan and we're gonna get those drum fish fried up just like you would chicken parmesan. You just wanna sear it on both sides, get it nice and brown, and then we're gonna put our sauce and our cheese on it and we're gonna bake it up for some drum parmesan. And you don't want any of that canola oil, none of that vegetable oil. You just want some good old fashioned Italian extra virgin olive oil. You're gonna dump it in the pan right here there we go and i'm never shy with the olive oil i'm never shy with the panko before you even fry these guys up what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pre-bake your oven to 450 get that thing real nice and hot so we're just going to add our drum fish in just like that nice and hot all right there we go and that olive oil is nice and hot. I got it on high heat. What I want to do is I just want to brown it. I'm not cooking it all the way through. That's where the baking is going to happen. I'm just browning this up right now. And I'll show you when I flip it over and we'll add it to the pan. All right, fish lots. Now let's see if uh, we got this nice and brown. Just like that. That's actually perfect. That's what you want. Because we're actually going to add some sauce and some cheese on it. Hey, Ben. Ben has joined us in the kitchen. There you go, look at that. That looks good already, huh guys? All right, flip this over here. Oh, all right. And so this is a sauce we're gonna use. So I'm Italian American. I grew up in an Italian household. My mother always has sauce laying around. So mama fish a lot. I'm just gonna use her extra sauce that she has just in the fridge. And we're gonna use this to coat the pan first before adding the fish. And then we're gonna douse this on top of the fish and then the cheese. And then we're tossing all this deliciousness into the oven. And this right here is all a matter of preference. Now, I absolutely love sauce, so I'm going to put sauce on the bottom. That prevents it from sticking when you bake it. And then I'm just going to douse sauce all over all of these guys right here. So I'm cooking three pieces of fish. And you can tell I'm just going to start rubbing in the sauce with my hands. I want to cover it all over the fish, just like that, right before I add the cheese. So that's looking pretty good right there, fish lots. And then, of course, the next part of this is going to be the cheese. Again, a matter of preference, you could add okay. as much or as little cheese as you want. I'm just going to cover them pretty evenly here, and that's going to come out just fine. Now, of course, if you're getting value out of this video, make sure to go ahead and boink that like button. This way, this video can share to more fish lots out there, and they can make more delicious fish and also learn how to catch these delicious fish. All right, let's throw them in the oven, and let's see how they come out. There we go. We're all going to be eating. We're all going to be having some drum parmesan. <laughs> and there's no no. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there's little Benedetto. Thank you, Benedetto. And big Benedetto. Benedetto. 
<laughs> Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. All right, there we go. Some drum parmesan right there. Let's get it in the plates. And it's gonna be Nuno approved. Ta. Hey, thank you, Juan. You are welcome. All right, let's do the, the Nuno approval test. Wow. <laughs> gotta take a big mug. All right, now we. Very good. All right, salute that. It's a very good fit for me. Okay. Mm. How is it, no, no? It's good. Is it good? It's very good. Hey, pass the no, no test. Yay! Drum Parmesan. Hey, Ben, pass the no, no test. Hmm. There's no, no, oh, just funny. devouring mm. some drum Parmesan there. There you go. Well, all right, fish lots. Drum Parmesan. It's good. Buon appetito. Grazie mille, Giovanni. <laughs> Prego, no problem. Ti ringrazio. And of course, if you want to learn how to fillet these fish so that you can actually cook it and make some drum parmesan, click on this end card right here where I share some professional tips from Captain Tom Daffin from Fishing Fever out of Cape May, New Jersey on how exactly to fillet these giant prehistoric fish. Click on this end card right here if you want to learn some useful tips and tricks on how you could catch more drum. All right, fish lots, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you out there on the water.